Hello, I'm Clark Prenzel. I'm the Weed Control Specialist with the Ministry of Agriculture. And uh, we're here today in front of our uh, Crop Diagnostic School demonstration on herbicide residues in the soil and what the impact of those would be on crops. Uh, the reason we're looking at that this year is because we've had several years where there's been low rainfall within season. And two of the things that we need for good herbicide breakdown and to be able to predict what we can plant the following year is an adequate moisture and warm soils. And so what we do is we measure rainfall between June 1 and September 1 to indicate whether there's a risk of, of carryover or not uh, to capture those warm soils. And so what we have in these plots here is uh, herbicides that were applied uh, along the, the line here that you can see in the background. And then what we did is we seeded a, a, an assortment of crops going the other direction to create a matrix out here uh, in order to try and uh, get symptoms that uh, we might see in the field from excess herbicide carryover. Okay, so in our plots here we have uh, a series of herbicides that represent different, uh, different chemical families or different modes of action. And uh, we've got uh, two plots right out of, the, out of the gate in the front here that represent group two. Uh, the damage that you would expect to see with group twos is uh, shortening of the plant and that generally that means a shortening of the areas between where the leaves attach and those are called inner node areas. Those will be shortened, the plant will grow to a certain point and potentially stop. And then after that it loses what's called apical dominance where that uh, plant uh, the rest of the growth of the plant is controlled by the main growing point and when you lose that you get a lot of branching that comes off the side. You'll also see some miniaturization of, of some of the new growth and you could see in grasses you can see some intervenal yellowing so that means that you've got yellow and green stripes going up and down the leaves is essentially what you see. The other thing that you'll see in grass plants in particular is that you'll see a change in the proportions between the leaf blade and the leaf sheath. So the leaf blades will be much shorter than you would expect them to be. Um, you'll also see lots of tillering in grasses so that they, they again lose their apical dominance and so they produce lots more tillers as a result of that. The other groups that we have in here is uh, group four. And what we see with group four symptoms is uh, normally people would recognize the, the curling and cupping of leaves that would be sort of a typical symptom you would see with a group 4 plant uh, or a group 4 herbicide on some broadleaf plants. Uh, what we would see in these plots as well is potentially some thickening of leaves. Uh, in our soybean plants what we're seeing is some puckering of the leaves that, that looks a lot like a viral infection. Uh, we're also seeing distortion of the leaves that changes the general shape of the leaf. Uh, so that it's more extended towards the tip rather than at the, a nice elliptical shape that you would expect for that leaf. Um, the other uh, product we have in here is Command. It's also a bleaching compound. Um, generally in Western Canada, we only have, uh, it's only for one crop and one weed. So it's for cleavers control and canola. Um, here what we've done is in order to generate symptoms, we've raised the rate of that to the rate that's used in Eastern Canada where it has a broader spectrum. And so we're seeing symptoms in the oats at the back, we're seeing symptoms in uh, some of the pulse crops as well, where we're, again, we're getting bleaching of those leaves. It also only moves upward in the, in the plant. So it moves up into the leaves and then outwards towards the edges where you'll see the symptoms more intense at the outer edges of the leaves and less so moving into the center. For more information, uh, you could go to saskatchewan.ca and search for herbicide residues. And there we have uh, maps that show the rainfall amounts in season for uh, the current season. There'll be a description of what uh, causes the problems. And we'll have a bit of a summary of where areas of risk are uh, for the coming year.